Welcome to the Biblical Truth of Bargain. First time we're doing this study live. And what it is, we're looking at the hymns that are in our hymnal. And we're looking, are they biblically correct? We found many that are not. And we have found many that are. And it's amazing, the hymnal is not inspired by God. The Bible is, the King James Bible is inspired, but not the hymnal. So we find many errors in the hymns that are sung in today's churches. And we got the YouTube, we got the SoundCloud, and we got the Hayward Family Ministry website where you go look up what we've done so far. And I've said before, and we, we've done it one other time, we're not going to always look at hymns, and today we're going to do this, that. Now the story of hymns, a lot of times we have told you that they are poems, they are stories of personal life, faith, and belief of the writers themselves. And we've looked at the fact is, what do we do when we get a hymn? Like, I love to tell the story. And you got a congregation of, of people, some love go out witnessing, some don't, and some are not even saved. Well, today what we're going to look at is a song that was found on the radio. I was, I've heard it a few times in the grocery stores. And the reason why I picked this one, it's a ballad. And the very fact is, like a hymn, let me move this over a little bit so I can read. Like a hymn, it's interesting that this song, Cats in the Cradle, 1974 from Harry Chaplin, and I'm using this for uh, learning, for education, fair use. And I don't charge anything for these studies. Share them, get them out, tell other people about them, let the Lord be praised. But this one has a particular story, and let me get down reading to it to you. The, the, the lyrics of this song is a poem, like many of the hymns. Now, what we're reading today, what we're studying today is not biblical. Okay, I'm stepping out of the realm of the, of the biblical, but... We're going to look at some biblical facts. By Harry's wife, Sandra Sandy Gatson. The poem itself was inspired by an awkward relationship between her first husband, James, and his father, John, who was a politician. She was also inspired by a country music song that, had, that she had heard on the radio. Chapman also sang the song it was about his own relationship with his son. Josh. Now watch this. Admitting, and I quote, frankly, the song scares me to death. Unquote. Now, I'm going to look at the realm of a righteous hymn that is approved of the Bible is holy and right and ought to be sung by Christians. And a hymn that does not match the Bible, that changes the Bible, ought not to be sung. We've seen many of those. You know, we're King James strong people, but to him it's changed the word of God. We've seen that. And the realm of the hymnal is spiritual and is also worldly. In the realm of radio, and I haven't listened to a radio, oh man, I don't know how long. It was way, way back. few years after I got saved and that's when I turned off the radio and had cassette tapes those little things that you put in and listen and we had CDs and and yet when we look, got the hymns out of the 70s ballads we came across some songs that actually taught well and there's a song called turn 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 I think it's the Eagles I forget I was sitting one time, I was at work, and I was filling the company's vehicle up, and I'm sitting there, you know, we do that when the old music comes on at the grocery store, don't we? We start singing the old songs. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, that's weird. Pumping gas in the vehicle. I was sitting, turn, 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 and I went home and typed it in the computer. I said, you know, tried to figure out, and I figured out. The birds, turn, 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 are lyrics 
that come out of the King James Bible, the book of Ecclesiastes. There's a time to die, there's a time. It's interesting. So, what is this hymn? It's not a hymn. So the biblical truth of our hands really don't go for this one. And we did one before about Satan. Uh, that worldly song, man, that matches Satan. You go back and find it. So here it is. Again, fair use. We're going to learn something. We're going to learn something good. I mean, I wouldn't go out and buy the album, the record, but. If you ever happen to hear it in a grocery store or on the radio, if you listen to the radio, I, I listen to the words. It says, my child arrived just the other day. He came to the world the usual way, through a mother. That's how, you know, that's no lie there. But there were planes to catch and bills to pay. So, life. And we need to realize as fathers, the first thing that's going, and it ain't satanic. Listen, uh, plain, he had to go somewhere and, you know, he had to pay his bills. That's not satanic. That's the world. We got to realize when it comes to our children, fathers, that's going to be the, it, the study of this, this thing. There's going to be distractions. And this song tells us about the distractions and uh, the consequence of the distraction. And it can be very ill to our children. And we got to be careful. So there's a job to be done. And you got bills to pay. Nothing wrong with that. Bible says pay your bills. A man ought to work. He learned to walk while I was away. I remember the first steps my son took. I happened to be home. I was working third shift. I remember those steps. He's writing it. You know, he got a phone call. Hey, guess what Junior did? I don't know what the child's name is, but Junior. I oh, actually did, but he took his first steps. And those first steps are, you know, you watch, the, he gets up and he. he he falls down. Gets up and he falls. Then boom, he's walking. And he was talking, for I knew it, as he grew. He said, the son would say, I'm going to be like you, Dad. You know I'm going to be like you. A young boy looks up at his dad and says, Dad, I'm going to be just like you. I don't think I have all the lyrics here. Oh, okay, there we are. Okay, we do have all the lyrics. I didn't hit the arrow. So, and the reframe is the cat's in the cradle with a silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man in the moon. When you come in home, Dad, little boy crying out to his dad, when you come in home, Dad, where's Dad? And this is not, you know, wait till your father gets home. This is the boy saying, where's dad? He's out, he's out working, he's out. And the answer would be, I don't know when. And it's from the father, he says, but we'll get together then. So I assume it's, it's a phone call. You know we'll have a good time then. My son turned 10 just the other day, how quick that was. He said, thanks for the ball, Dad. Come on, let's play. It's his first baseball, first football. Can you teach me to throw? Thanks for the ball, Dad. Can you show me how to do it? Can you show me how to do it? And I said, not today. I got a lot to do. 
He said, the boy said, that's okay. I got to say, I'm guilty of that. I have been guilty of that. Have you ever not just broken time down and say, okay, let me stop what I'm doing. Spend a little time with your child. Maybe with your wife. Or if you're a woman, with your husband. Your daughter. I'm having a great time right now. My daughter's learning how to drive and I'm sitting in a passenger seat and this is great. That's never going to come back. Those are memories. Boy says, little boy says, it's okay. And he walked away. But his smile never dimmed. It said, I'm going to be like him. That's what the smile said. Yea, I know I'm going to be like him. I'm going to be like my dad. My dad has no time for me. I'm going to be like my dad. You know, that, that, that is something, you know, when, you, when your little child, your son looks at you and says, Dad, if you you're my inspiration. Forget the superheroes. Forget, you know, the, 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 the battle robots. Forget who's on TV. Forget, you know, you're my dad. I look up to you, dad. I want to be like you. I want to be like my dad in many ways. He was a pipe fitter. I wanted to be a pipe fitter. My dad had no time for me. My dad had involved his life in great sins. And this is bringing sadness to me. Well, he came from college just the other day. Look how quick he was born. Go back. He was born. And you know, there are planes, all kind of, and he said, I was going to be like, he, he said, he started walking in sports where I'm going to be like you, Dad. Son, here's a ball. Come on, Dad, show me how to use it. Don't have the time, son. That's okay. I'm going to be like you. And he's come home from college. So much like a man, I just had to say. There's my son. There he is. Son, I'm proud of you. Eh? Pride. That's a sin, but this is the song. I don't know what the salvation of this gentleman is and his wife that wrote it, but son, I'm proud of you. Can you sit for a while? Now the father's coming to the son. I'm, I'm grown up now. I've got... Come on, son, sit with me. Son, I got the time now. He shook his head and said with a smile, I really like to, Dad. Is to borrow, what I would really like, Dad, is to borrow the key car keys. See you later. Can I have them, please? Now the father wants to sit down. And he wants to relish the moment with his son. When the son wanted to relish moments with him, and the father's like, I can't, I'm too busy, son. And the son's come up, well, I, I just want the car keys. And I'm not saying don't have a job, don't pay your bills, but I got airplanes to catch, I got bills to pay, I don't have the time right now. Material things are getting away between a father and a son. Or a parent and a child, or a, a spouse and a spouse, husband and wife. Now the child's grown up, he said, well, I got a material thing now. I need the car, Dad. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. That's sad. 
I've long since retired. And my son's moved away. I called him just the other day. Now, you remember when we took... And when we started this, he said over here, the little boy goes, when are you coming home, Dad? I don't know when, but we'll get together then. Remember I told you that was a phone call? The son's on the phone and says, Dad, when are you coming home? Where's my dad? And he tells right there, it's not the mother saying, I don't know when. He says, you know, it's me. I don't know when, but we'll get together then. Now he's on the phone. The father's on the phone with the son. I like to see you if you don't mind the father said he said i love to dad if i can find the time sound familiar you see my new job's a hassle got airplanes to catch the kids have the flu well, it's not coronavirus. I got bills to pay. It's been sure nice talking to you, Dad. That's not very much of a conversation. Son, come on. Let's, let's get together. Well, Dad, you know, I got this, I got this, I got that. Nice talking to you. That's the same thing the father gave the son growing up. It's been sure nice talking to you. That's not a very long conversation. And that's not a very long conversation that the father gave the son. Fathers. You got to realize the Bible says, Be not deceived, God's not mocked. What sort of man so that he shall also read? Why did my child grow up and reject me? Look back. Did you reject him? I know everybody has a free will, but that child mirrors the parents. The daughter of the mother and the, and the son of the father. And they've got their own ways. I understand there could be a saved father, lost son, saved son, lost... I, I understand that. There's a lot in me that my dad and I hated. I'm sorry. I love my dad. My dad is the first one I witnessed to. I pray for my dad to get saved, but there's things in me of my dad and I, I hate it. I'm sorry. If I need to confess it, I'll confess it's in, but it's in me. And there are things in my son I see in me and in, in my children. It's like, oh, God, I put that into him. I see some of my sins in my children and I put that into them. I'm getting back what I put in. With interest. That's the law of sowing and reaping. And you get more of an interest back than you would from the bank. Or any financial institution. And it's usually not good. Now, I've heard growing up, I don't know, a couple times, a few times, my, you know, your children will always do that which is the worst part of you rather than the good. It's true. But you can't teach a child that because they're not going to learn that till they have their own children. Oh, yeah, now that's right. I'm going to try to teach my child and they're not going to listen. Now, this is not a hymn. This is a, this is a worldly, secular song. It's on, it used to be on the radio sometimes still. But is it not teaching the truth? And what did he say? Chapman also said the song was about his own relationship with his son, Josh Mitty. Frankly, this song scares me to death. All right, if you're not going to read the Bible in school, and you're going to have a, a, a male grow-up sexual kind of thing where the girls are in one room and the boys are not like they used to do when I was in school, and you want to think about growing up, being a husband, and, and being a father, I think they should sit that child in the room and say, if you're not going to play the Bible, I think this song should be, I want you guys to listen to the song, and here's the words as you follow along. They're not going to, because this is respectful, this is something that teaches. And sure, nice talking to you. 
As I hung up the phone, it occurred to me the father. Now this is where it's too late. He grown up just like me. My boy was just like me. Now let me ask you a question. When the father called up, let's go back. He said, I called him up just the other day. I said, I'd like to see you if you don't mind. The son says, I'd love to, Dad, if I could just find the time. The son says, you see, my new job's a hassle. The kids have the flu. How much time do you think that son is now paying to the grandchildren of this man, his children? When the, when the outcome of this song is he's growing up just like me, my boy is just like me, that means he's not giving enough time to his own children as the father had. And those children are going to grow up like the grandfather. And it's almost like a religion. You're going to grow up in this and the family traditions and values of what we're growing up in. And this is a lot of the, of the mountain families and, and the old families of villages. You're going to, your father was a Cooper. You're going to be a Cooper. Your children are going to be Coopers and your great grandchildren are going to be Coopers. Until there's no more Coopers. And there are even names that, oh, if you have the name Smith, you were working in metal or blacksmith or some kind. Your name, Carpenter, was given to the trade of your family. Hayward is a name that in England deprives of, of men who took care of the forest. And what we do... What our sins are, are going to be processed into our children because they live with us, they see us. And yeah, they're going to get, if you're a Christian, you're saved. Yeah, they're going to get, you know, the, the values of Christ. They're going to get the Bible, but they're also going to get the bad side of you. So we are all born into sin and iniquity. What do you do? I gotta move this over. What do you do when we transport into our children sins? Well, let's just see what the Bible says. Now we'll look at the Joshua 4 6 says, This may be a sign among you. That when your children ask their fathers in time to come and say, What mean ye these stones? These are stones that Joshua took out of the Jordan River. And the son's going to come up and say, Father, uh, I heard something about a long time ago. And I, a man named Joshua put these, stone, these 12 stones here. What is the story, Dad? What's the story, Grandpa? Sorry, son, I don't have time. I got bills to pay. I like what my, my pastor said. I, believe he's, I think he said it was his father. I forget. But you ought to write down your testimony. So your children, your children's children, your children's children to the rapture. To know who you are and what you are. Are you going to be too busy? And their families today, they're too busy to teach their children the Bible. I seen a family the other day because of coronavirus. They're sitting home, they're having a Bible study. Really? Finally? It took God take closing your church and finally get you stuck in your house. You can't go anywhere that you're finally going to open up the, the Bible with your... It finally took... I've been doing that since 2000. And even before that. Publicly, 2000. Dad, what, what's these stones here? What are you going to tell them? Are you going to tell them the story? Or are you going to tell them I don't have time?
in Judges 2.17, yet they were not hearkening to the judges. But they went whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the obeying the commandments, but they did not so. All right, there are fathers who are going to do right. There are fathers out there that love the Lord, do right, proper husband, proper father, proper church member, and that always doesn't mean that your children are going to do right. Look at David and look at Samuel. But did you nurse in them the ability to do right? Did you train up a child in a way that he... Did you train up that child? Or is it, I don't have the time. Too busy. Judges 6.13, Gideon said unto him, Oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why is it all this is befalling us? Where be all the miracles which our fathers told us, saying, Somebody sat down with Gideon and said, Gideon, let us tell you. Somebody took time with Gideon. Say, Gideon, Gideon and I would assume many times, I see parents, oh, my child, why, 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 why? You better answer those whys. You better answer those whys before the world answers those whys. Second Kings 15, 9. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord as his father had done. Okay, sometimes your child's going to turn out just as terrible as the father was. I have learned many a time, I can make this statement of a fact from prison ministries, many a time, many a time, not all, many of the time, a man who has been involved in alcoholism, the drunkard, Many a times, you can trace it back to the Father. And you can even trace it back to the fact that, you know, back in the 70s, it used to be a joke. Here, son, here's a can of beer. And, you know, get the kid you know, a sip of your beer or the finish the rest of the beer. I, it was done to me. I'd be given a can of beer. Here, son, you can finish it. And laugh it off. I thank God. That God given me the victory over alcohol before I was married in November 2nd, 1991. That my my wedding, the ceremony, or the reception afterwards was a dry wedding. I had already given up alcohol. I had not had alcohol. And my wife and I decided, hey, this is going to be a dry wedding. And we angered many people who came to the receptions looking for booze. And they even went to uh, a bar or something. There, there was other different... Uh, ceremonies there went and looking for alcohol and it was posted for us there would be no alcohol allowed into our room that we had our reception and that angered people I thank God God gave me the victory over alcohol my dad was an alcoholic and I have many many terrible dream uh, thoughts and memories of that man I thank God that God got me out of that I thank God. And I'm not giving you a license like psychiatry. It's your mother's fault. It's your father's fault. It's your grandparent. It ain't it. We've got a free will. I came to Jesus Christ and put my sins upon Jesus, repented of my sin, and sought God to get rid of my sin. And he gave me the victory. 2 Kings 17, 14, notwithstanding, they would not hear, but harden their necks like the neck of their fathers. Rebellion. You can teach your children rebellion. Is that not what that song that we, we read? Son, I don't have time right now. Oh, son, let's spend some time together. Dad, I ain't got time right now. Those memory times are gone. I remember my son growing up. I was there. I remember the time we tried to teach him to ride a bike and he, he just couldn't get it. 
He didn't want to do it. But we tried. I remembered. I can right now I'm picturing him seeing me, he got his little helmet on, he got his bike, and I know exactly where he was in Grot. I remember the first time sledding and all that. And there are times you guys say, son, I can't. But when you can, okay, son, let's go right now. You, don't make it weeks. It may not be able to be that day. Say, okay, you know, first time you got time. But I said, listen, I couldn't have been with you that day. But right now I'm free, giving it all to you. You want to you play the ball or do something else? But you see what time does? A second becomes a minute. A minute becomes an hour. An hour becomes a day. A day becomes a week. A week becomes years. And years becomes decades. A decade becomes... Man, it only feels like yesterday I was sitting in a school in a desk saying, Oh, I wish my this school life was over. I wish I was older. Psalm 78.3 which we have no heard and known, and our fathers have told us. What have you told your children? Tell them it's okay to drink a beer, or is it what God says? Are you teaching the ways of sin, or are you teaching the way of holiness? Fathers, what have you told your children? Oh, I'll just send my wife and the kids to church. I'm going to sleep in. Okay, then your children are growing up. Why are they not in church? I don't know. <laughs> Psalm 78, 8. And might not as their fathers a stubborn, re rebellious generation. A generation that, is, that set not their heart aright. And whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Father, are you wishy-washing your walk with Christ? Don't you stick your children beyond the fire of the Lord, serving the Lord, doing right, if you're not an example. I'll tell you right now, Father should not be the first one that walks into the church. What are you saying? I think the Father should be the one that holds the door for his wife and his children and follows them into the church. How's that? But he's there in church. Unless you got something, you know, contagious, you're there. Even if you're sick and tired, you're there in church. That shows your children. Hey, it's got to mean something. And what about when you, when your children have your grandchildren, and they, what can they tell you about you, Dad? Man, I remember my dad. He man, he wasn't feeling well, but he was in church. I mean, we had to leave church early. I mean, he was just in a lot of pain. But, you know, we were there. I see my dad pray. I see my Bible. My dad read his Bible. I see my dad seek God. I see, what, what, what is your children going to tell your grandchildren? I ain't got time. Where did that come from? Well, that's what dad used to tell me all the time. According to the song. Is it your life? Luke 1 17, he said, Go forth in the spirit, the, the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers and the children, and the disobedient the wisdom of the just, and make ready the people prepared for the Lord. Fathers, you got to set those children. Now, God may step in as somebody like me. I was saved when I. I was 18 years old, and neither of my parents were saved. Neither went to church, and it's amazing that God called such a sinner, a wicked person as me, saved my soul, and set a fire underneath my spiritual butt to go out and do things. I am an exception to the rule, as many are. But I have sat in many churches that have gone crazy. Listen, I don't leave church because, oh, this church ain't right. Time to Listen, I left churches because they've gotten corrupt. And I look at the families today, and I told my wife, I said, you, they're, they're going to be out of church. Unless they repent and get right. And, and they're out of church. The whole church is out of church. It's nonsense. Do 
You've got to go into the spirit of the Lord as a husband and father into your family and guide them. And they're going to rebel against you. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. And that will be your family. I thank God. God's given me a family that has been unrebellious. Who is ready to go serve the Lord. I've got, I've got an extraordinary family. Man, they want to go serve the Lord. I, they don't give me a hard time when it comes to serve. They want to learn. They want to know. They want me to teach them. I thank God for that. Not many families are like that. My daughter soaks in the Word of God. Some of your children are in church, but they're not there. Acts 7.51, you stiff neck, uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do ye. How about the fact that one day, you know, your child comes up and says, Dad, why do we have family Bible study? That's something that my dad taught us. Dad, why we go to church? I went to church because my father get, gathered everybody and went to church. Ephesians 6, 4. Ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Again, Colossians 3, 21. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Don't anger your children being a father. So that means you got to know how not to anger. You got to seek God. You got to read your Bible. I think the Bible says, "Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth." And you're going to be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ, many fathers, because you didn't rightly divine on how to be a father to that child that God gave you. Hebrews twelve nine. Furthermore, we had fathers of our flesh, Daddy. Which corrected us. Fathers, you're to correct the correct children, not the mother. Now, I believe a mother correct the child into the, into the famous expression, was, which never heard in my house, but wait till your father gets home. I've heard that many times. I've heard many stories. And when I hear those stories of Bible-believing Christians, it's not, oh, how wicked my father, it's how much my father loved me. He take me out behind the woodshed. And it hurts for a father. Listen, when they say this is going to hurt me more, more than it hurts you, you better believe it hurts. It may hurt your hiney. But it hurts our spirit. I don't like correcting. I don't care if they're crocodile tears. They still burn into the heart. We live in a generation today where, where children are not corrected by their fathers and they don't even know who their fathers are. And many times, many of them, in order to find their father, it would be like a police lineup. And that's a shame. The churches are broken. The families are broken. And the fatherhood is broken today. And you're going to turn around and say, God bless America. Yeah, right. Not until the fathers and husbands re get down on their knees, repent of their sins, and get right before Jesus Christ of the Bible without religion. But you're not going to get that because modern churches don't teach and preach repentance because we're all okay. Then you're a failure. 1 John, John 2.13 I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that was from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father, God. That Father of the fathers has known God from the beginning. He has taught his young man about the devil, and he's taught his children about God the Father. There it is. It's not about sports. It's not about movies. It's about God, 
Jesus, the Bible. And the family right is, according to the, uh, Ephesians, is God, Jesus Christ, the father or husband, husband or the father, the wife or the mother, the children, then the job. Then the job. You can't put the child above the husband and you can't put the job above the children. And many today put the job above God and Jesus Christ. I can't go to church because I got to work. You messed up God's ladder, family ladder, if you want to call it that. Or one day, it's been nice talking to you. As I hung up the phone, it occurred to me. He'd grown up just like me. My boy was just like me. Had no time. No time for dad, and I would assume no time for his children. Why? Because dad did not take the time for his children. That is a horrible conclusion to come to. He said he moved away. It didn't say how far he moved away. I know this is video. There's no altar. But how are you doing, Father? Father to be. I hope you found somewhere that you need to repent of God. If we confess our sins, He, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. It cleanses from all righteousness. All right, you can say, Lord God, listen, Brother Hayward's right. I'm completely, I have sinned against you and I've sinned against my child. Lord God, forgive me. Amen. God will forgive you. God will cleanse. Now get out there and get it right with your child. Take that child and say, come on, say, you know what? Let's, let's go do something. Why, Dad? Because I want to be with you, son. And put your arm around that son and say, son, I want to, I want to do things with you. And if I, daddy ever says, you know, I don't have to, we'll, we'll come, if, if I can't break it, if, if I can't, we're going to find time. Okay, son? Let's make a fatherly pact right now, if the Lord willing, if, if the Lord will allow, you and I are going to do things together. And make that child when he grows up, and if you're to have children, the Lord tarries. I don't know, this one time, Dad just freaked out. He, 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 well, I don't know what happened to him, but man, he became a dad. Hey, kids, let's get in the car. Let's go see Grandpa. You think this kid here at the end of the story, uh, uh, you think he's, all right, kids, let's get in the car. Go see, you think, no, I ain't got time. I ain't got time. Oh, I'm a Christian. Are you a father of children? Yes, I am. And part of your duty for being a Christian is what you do with your children. Do you know who their Sunday school teacher is? Do you know what they're learning? Do you? 